I really just do be feeling down some of these days. And yo, the way I get out, the way I get out, I, I, I'm just not going to let shit hold me down, bro. I'm not going to let shit hold me back. I'm going to literally get up. I'm going to create new content. <laughs> I'm alive, bro. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Three, two, one, and we're live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on another episode of Jesus, your host, George Mora. And your co-host, oh yeah, that's right. There is no co-host today, guys. There is going to be no co-host today. What happened to Edwin Chuya? What happened? Did he quit? Did he leave? Is he gone forever? Is he gone for good? No, he's not gone for good, guys. Don't worry, all right? Edwin Chuya is going to be back and better. But um, yo, I got some news to break with you guys. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I got some real news to break with y'all. I got the vid. I got the COVID. I came out positive. I came out positive, man. That shit sucks. All right. So I've known for a few days now. <sighs> I'm guess I guess I'm just gonna talk about it. I guess I'm gonna just uh you know put it all out there. Um, yes, I got the vid. It sucked for the first two days. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was, <laughs> bro. Like when you get it, you really thinking like, yo, like all the news you've heard. Am I going to be the one? Am I going to be that 5% that just knocks off, bro? Like, you know, like just, oop, croaks. So, thank God it wasn't me. And I'm good. I, I had a bad headache the first day and a high fever. And then I literally just had a fever and I had to keep breaking the fever. It went up and down. And after the second day, I was A-OK. -okay. All right. I went on Google and it said after the fourth or fifth day, you're going to feel really bad. So on the fourth, fifth day, I'm waiting for it to get bad. It didn't. Thank God. You know, no cough, no nothing crazy, nothing crazy, mind you. So I was A-OK. -okay. All right. I'm A-OK. -okay, thank God. I let everybody know. I let my family know. I let my girl know. Let Yo, just let everybody know. And they all got, nah, hold up. So not, not everybody got it. Not everybody got it. So my girl got it. My best friend got it. My cousin got it. Pretty much, yo, know, like anybody in my close circle got it. Nobody's had any serious symptoms. Probably just a fever for like a day or two. And they're all bouncing back. They're all recovering. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to drastically get worse. I don't know why, but you know what? I'm just happy we're A-OK. -okay. We took a lot of emergency. I helped that flush me out. I took some zinc. I took Tylenol. Tylenol is the biggest factor that helped out a lot. In my, in my case and in all my, and everybody I know around me's case. All right. I don't know. I guess there's something in Tylenol that just helps the COVID um, not react as bad. I don't know, guys. But you know what? I'm A-okay. -okay. I'm here. And um, all I'm thinking about is... The things that have happened to me this week and that have been happening this week in the world entirely. So why should you be watching this podcast today? Um, because, yo, listen, there's a lot of bad shit going on today in the stock market, all right? The stock market is crashing, all right? And how should you take, how should you take advantage of this situation is what I'm going to talk about today, how you can take advantage. Should you be scared? No, you probably, no, you know, you shouldn't be scared at all. It's actually a great day to do even better in the stock market, to, to make even like potentially more gains in the future. But, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try to clear some things up on maybe why the stock market is reacting the way it is. You know, all the news I've been hearing, listen, this, this is no financial advice. All right. Make this, make that very clear at first. All right. I'm not a financial advisor by any means. I am just a guy on YouTube with a podcast, all right? And I'm here to find new ways to make money and entertain you guys. <laughs> but also, yo, I'm risking my neck out here because I'm over here putting my money in the stock market. So, you know, if you're one of those people who don't know how to make more money or you're in that, you're, like I said, if you're in that situation where 
you know, you want to figure out how do I make money? You know, is the stock market a good place for me? Well, maybe I can answer a few of those questions for you, okay? Especially if you're new, because I have a lot of people DMing me asking me, yo, George, what should I do? What should I do with these stocks? You know, should I buy these stocks? You know, I'm really new. I don't know what to do. Yada, yada, yada. Yo, it's burning. The stock market is going down. I'm losing my money. Yo, believe me, I'm in the hurt. I'm in the hurt. And if you've been watching this podcast for the last six months, You've seen my investing journey because I literally started six months ago. So should you be listening to me? No. Should you be watching me? Yes. <laughs> Why should you be watching me? Why should you be watching me? Because you're going to watch me risk my own money. And then you're going to figure out, hey, listen, through what he's talking about, through the fundamentals that he's talking about, you know, maybe you know, maybe I can, I can start doing some research on what he's talking about. You know, maybe he can pass off that, that, um, stock market investor positive mentality towards me, which is very important. The psychology behind the stock market, um, you know, making sure your emotions are in check is very important when you're in the stock market. All right. And I know a lot of you people aren't in the stock market. So, you know, yo, just hear me talk, hear me ramble off and, t and talk about it. You know, why not? Why not talk about it? So yeah, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. Be right back, guys. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your boy is back. Back. Yes, I am in my suit. If you're listening to the podcast, you cannot see how stunning I look. But yeah, yo, I'm wearing my suit to bring y'all stock market news. All right. Um, yeah, yo, listen, the stock market has been incredibly volatile this week. All right. I know I'm not going to make this boring. Don't worry. I'm not going to get overly technical, analytical with y'all. All right. I'm going to get very straight, sweet, sweet, straight into the point. I don't know. Whatever the fuck it is. That's, that's what I'm going to get to. All right. Um, the stock market has been going really down. This is something that's been just incredibly expected, um, by I think anybody that's an investor, honestly, Everybody that's getting that little stimmy check is finding new ways to make more money off that stimmy check because, yo, we're home, bro. I'm quarantined here for two weeks, and all I've been doing is looking into stocks like a motherfuck. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all yeah, know what I'm saying, all right? So, you know, a lot of people have been throwing their, a lot of millennials, a lot of people our age, you know, 25, 20s, you know, maybe even younger than that, have been taking their money, running to the bank, and then literally put in their money in Robinhood and then just start trading, all right? They see a red day like today and they start pulling out and pulling out and pulling out. And um, a, lot of, a lot of younger people are probably losing money right now. Let's, let's be completely honest. There's also many, many, many other factors going into this. That's one of the things that I've seen, all right? A lot, Tesla has fallen significantly, all right? Oh, well, not significantly. I'd say like, it's been like 8%, 10%. Whatever the past week. Um, so it's moments, it's days like this as an investor, you know, where you should take advantage and you should be buying in slowly, a little bit, all right? You should be looking at the long term plays, the five plus year positions, the five plus year stocks, and you should be really looking at your savings account and then thinking, all right, cool, I'm gonna take a little bit of my money, or that's what I'm doing. This is, this is my plan, is I'm taking a little bit of my money. And I'm just throwing it slowly into this burning, into this burning house, all right? Because I feel the pain and emotion that you guys are going through, all right? Every day I'm looking at it and it's going down and down. And, and it's honestly like I'm just putting my money in and I just see it go down. And I'm like, oh God, just throw one more. And honestly, for me, it's like I'm buying like a share a day. You know what I'm saying? Every day it's going down. And if it bounces back up, that's great. Honestly, why am I not investing heavily? I think there's gonna be a bigger, bigger, bigger crash around April, June, July, August. There's just a huge bubble that's going on, a huge tech bubble. And also the government is honestly just printing out money. So it can't be good for the dollar long-term, all right? It, it has to fall. What comes up must come down. And I think this is just something that's been coming for a long time now. COVID has honestly just helped expose it a little more. And and it's kind of been, um, I feel, accelerating it because of how much money the government's been printing has been printing out to, to, I guess, stabilize people, but not really because they're screwing people over. All right. And here's how, if you've seen my last episode, CCIV, I told you that stock is going to double 
and double it did. Within that fucking week, mind you, it did double, bro. It went from $35 or $30 to $60, all right? And I was there that day, and did I sell? No, I did not sell. And now it's down to $29, $28, all right? Why did this happen? Why? How, how, how could it go from $60 down to $29? George, explain to me. Explain to me. Guess what? Yo, we, we, looked at the, we looked at the news. We looked at the Bloomberg terminals, all right? We did our research. I did my research. And then hedge funds just decided to scalp us. Scalp us at $60. It was, it was, CCIV was already overinflated in value. And um, yo, listen, they took it home. So now, right now, I would be saying it's a great deal. It's a great opportunity to buy in a little more. I have honestly just doubled down on my position. And I am in the negatives right now, all right? I am red. I am bleeding. I am over $4,000 in this stock. And I am bleeding, all right? And I'm going to keep bleeding. And I think it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. All right. My thing is with Lucid and CCIV, you know, the, the, the deal has already come out. We were completely right on the deal. All right. The fact that it's that the price went down is, is honestly a good thing. It shows that there's less volatility. It's less risky. All right. Even though right after the deal came, all right, the deal got one, the deal got renegotiated because of all the hype around it. All right. Which brought the valuation of the stock even lower and then which is well i think the, the valuation of the stock now was like at 37.50 so right now it's trading at 29 dollars. so it's it's still low it's a it's a great time to, to buy in if you haven't already um but it did double when i said it was i just i'm like i said i'm into long-term investing i'm not gonna sit here and take my money out i think the only loss i've taken was in nicola it's the only one i've accepted I took my money out and then I put my money into something else. And then I just recently, I think two weeks ago, I sold MVIS micro microvision just because it, it it went up so quick. I was like, yo, let me just let me just take my 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 gains. And honestly, we got sidelined. We got sidelined by hedge funds um with CCIV. So yo, I I don't know what to tell you besides yo, hold hold it. Hold the line, all right? All these new investors are pulling their money out because they don't understand the psychology behind investing. And in reality, when you've done your research, when you've done your due diligence, that's the that's when you have to really put your faith or I guess your hope or whatever behind all the research that you've done, all right? And I'm I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold because I believe that Lucid is going <laughs> to is going to come out with a good car, all right? Or maybe even a decent car at first, but they're going to continue to improve that car. And right now there's no real other competitor besides Lucid that's trying to push their car out as fast as they can. As soon as the CCIV and and the deal got made and all this shit happened, guess what? The CEO comes out and they're like, yo, guess what? We're going to push back our cars. We're going to release them at a later time because we want to perfect it. All right. Which I'm like, wow. So listen, CCIV might be sitting, might be a sitting duck for a while. I might be very heavily invested in it, but I'm not taking losses. I, I, I still think it's a great company. I think they're going to do well. Um, are they going to do as well as Tesla? Yo, we'll see, bro. We'll see, right? So... I'm not scared, like I said. And I don't think that, I think that a lot of new investors shouldn't be scared either, all right? And that's what I'm here for, okay? I'm just that guy that's gonna slowly buy in and if I do sell, I'm gonna announce it. But I, I there's nothing There's nothing I'm, I'm really trying to sell. I'm just trying to really just double down on some of my positions, which is like Redfin, EXPI, you know? Like right now I'm looking at real estate, Rocket Mortgage. Um, EXPI and Redfin, they're, they're, they're down, so it's a great time to buy those companies. Um, you know, slowly again, cautiously, it's what I'm doing. I'm buying it cautiously. I'm buying, I'm, I'm, I'm buying just like a stock, like a, a share a day, nothing crazy. Like I said, I think there's going to be a much bigger crash coming. So I'm going to wait for that. I'm going to just slowly save my money. I'm going to buy all these little red days. You know, it's nothing big to me. I'm not getting overly emotional about it. It's just kind of funny to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I, I went from like $15,000 plus, um, plus, uh, profit or something like that down to like 8,800. So, yo, it stings. It hurts to see that. But, yo, this is Fugazi money, bro. Like, this is just getting rich on paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm not really seeing any of this money and I don't plan to see any of this money 
till later on in the future. So it is what it is. If you're not in it for long term, then and and you're in it for as a day trader, I'm not here to want to tell you what to day trade, what not to day trade. You know, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. And realistically, long term, and this is something Warren Buffett said, is time in the market beats timing the market. You understand? So the more time you're inside the market without selling is you're better, you're gonna be better off long term than just trying to jump in and jump out and then jump back in. All right. Even the most successful people in Wall Street, there are only one percent of people that's that do this successfully year after year after year. You know how low that is, bro? <laughs> like it's ridiculously low. All right. So and and if you're new to investing, you don't know what to buy and you want to take advantage of the situation. I'd say buy some Vanguard, buy some SPE. All right, buying one share of these com- uh, of of this stock uh, of these stocks, which is like I said, Vanguard or SPE, it's like buying it's literally buying three thousand five hundred different companies into one stock. All right, into one little package. All right, and listen, it one thing that the SPE has done consistently over like a hundred years uh, over since 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 the stock market has literally kind of opened is it's gone up. All right. It's only gone up. It's only gone up. All right. So like I said, long-term investing is where the money's at. All right. Warren Buffett said it. If you don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's like the old time, he's, he's, he's just like the godfather of stocks or the, the godfather of the stock market, realistically. So don't be scared. Just don't be scared. All right. Just, 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 just listen. Let's listen to, to, to brother, brother, brother Jesus, brother Jesus George. All right. Um, anyways, all right, um, moving on, all right, because that, that's, if, that's enough, I'm going to talk about the stock market. I, I'm not going to over try to compli- overcomplicate it for you guys, all right? As far as Bitcoin is concerned, all right, Bitcoin, I see it drop, I, I think it's dropped down to 44,000. I'm going to make my way towards Bitcoin, guys. I, I have to, I have to. It's a big opportunity. Like I told y'all before, Tesla bought it at 1.5 billion. All right, they put 1.5 billion into it at like over 50,000. All right, I I stupidly sold. I stupidly sold. I I bought in at 29,000 like last month or like three weeks ago, and I sold at 48,000. You know, made a nice 600, 600. But uh, you know, once you sell out, you have to pay taxes. So you know, it's not it's not fun either. Um, but either way, I'm going to be buy. I'm going to be buying back. Like I said, I'm going to, I might, I might buy in slowly at like a hundred dollars a week and then Ethereum as well, a hundred dollars a week. Um, you know, just, just to get the ball rolling. And then once it really drops, that's when I'm really going to go a lot heavier in, um, when it drops like around 30,000, I think 30,000 is when I'm going to go a lot heavier uh, on the stock, uh, on the stock, on the Bitcoin. It's just, um, you know, I, I think the the bonds, um, the U.S. Treasury bonds failed yesterday, and uh, I forgot Kim, some some governor rep, government representative, I forgot her name, Kim, Kim Cox, I think I, I forgot her name, but she was talking about replacing the bonds with Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? So now the government is starting to really look at Bitcoin, like yo, we should be talking about this, we should be looking about this, bro. You know, and that that's honestly what I'm gonna be doing. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And now, when should you sell Bitcoin? You know, how, how, what, what do you see Bitcoin going to the evaluation? The one thing I've, I've been hearing about a lot about Bitcoin and I have Bitcoin friends really heavily invested is the moment you're going to know when you're not, you're not, you, you know when you're going to sell it or, you know what I'm saying? Like, sorry, I, I forget the phrase. The phrase is, is you're going to know when to sell Bitcoin when you don't need to sell it because you're going to be using it. You understand? Like that, that's insane to me. I'm like, wow. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. So I'm pretty much just going to buy Bitcoin and hold it, man. I'm one of those people that I'm just a collector. All right. I just like collecting things and I just like to hold it. And if you don't believe in this mentality, I'm going to share a few reasons why you should believe in this mentality. All right. The Pokemon cards that I've been talking about for like the last few months, there's a drought. There's no, you cannot find Pokemon anywhere. All right. I've bought $16 boxes at BJ's while doing my groceries and they have doubled in value. All right. They are at $44, $45 on Amazon right now. Just a box, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? Like they've doubled in value because people really want them because they're getting that hype. And all you had to do was buy it and then hold it. You know what I'm saying? What's your money doing in your bank account? Absolutely nothing. So that's why I, I, I don't like having too much money in my bank account, but I do. I do. I have my emergency fund. All right. I'm smart about it. Yeah. I think everybody should have an emergency fund. What's an emergency fund, George? Oh my God. What's an emergency fund? An emergency fund is something I have that it just is going to, if something happens to me, like this COVID happens to me, or if I go break a leg or if something happens to me, I'm covered for the next six months. I'm good for six months on rent. I'm good for six months on my car insurance. I'm good for six months on just everything. All right. And you know, maybe not six months, maybe like four months. All right. And then the rest of it, I'm just kind of saving and I'm holding to put to invest more into the stock market when I think it drops immensely. So I'm going to tell you to really focus on just saving your money and slowly dipping your toe into the stock market right now if you haven't already. Like I said, ESPE, Vanguard, like these are just like, these are good things to just look at. You know what I'm saying? Do your research though. You know, do your research because this is not financial advice. You know, I'm just, I'm just. Just talking about things that I, I, I'd be doing if I was a new, if I was a new investor, um, which I am, which I am. That's why, that's why I'm saying like, you know, I've only been in for six months, so I'm doing as much research as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm watching as many outlets as I can in a day and I'm just consuming all this information and trying to sh- dumb it down as like, as dumbed down as possible as can be and share it with you guys. All right. Um, yeah, man, uh, that's it. I'm, 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 I'm done with stock market news. Stock market, stock market news. All right, Ugh, fuck. I'm, 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 I'm just so burnt out on it. Today it's, it's dropped, but it's kind of boring. You know, interest rates for houses have gone up from three percent to five percent. I know, I know that's all boring shit. You guys probably don't want to hear, but you know, like I said, like this, this is also about making money. All right, guys, I really do want to focus. I want the show to focus on entertainment, growth, and lifestyle, and growth is money growth, it's mental growth, it's physical growth, it's conversational growth, you know, and the entertainment part, it's just going to be like the little stories I tell guys, it's going to be the little stories I tell, so that's going to be it for the stock market news, Um, you know, like I said, my best advice, again, to reiterate, hold, all right, if you've got something, hold it, if you've got short-term positions that are in the green, I'd recommend, you know, hit, you know, make a plan, make a strategy, you know, maybe slowly sell off those positions and start buying more of those long-term positions is something I'd really recommend. My long-term positions are, again, Tesla, Spotify, Apple, Disney, all right? These are big. CCIV, these five stocks are big on my long-term list, big on my long-term list. Um, Redfin, EXPI, um, you know, these are all ticker symbols you should be looking at and then doing some research on, all right? I'm giving, you know, put it on your watch list, all right? And if you don't know where to invest or where to start investing, I got you guys, link in the description. I've got Webull, all right? Webull is a free investing app, no commissions, no nothing. You put your money in, you don't have to worry about it. And um, it's safe, secure, it's, it's what I use, all right? So, you know, if you want to use that, use that. You also get... I think three free stocks for signing up and depositing $100 into the stock. So, yo, that's free. That's literally free money right there, all right? Like I said before, when I bought in, they gave me a free Snap stock at $12, and it's at like $60 right now. Even during this crash, it still hasn't dropped. Yo, can you believe that? Um, but yeah, anyways, I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. I am back. Hold on, make sure this camera's working. All right. Well, shit, yes, the camera is working very well. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to bore you out. But, uh, yo, listen, talking to myself is going to be a little weird. It's going to be different. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do daily ones, but I just really want to make content, guys. I just really I, I want to motivate y'all or give y'all some kind of, like, ambition. And, um, you know, like, like I said, like, this week, it's just, dude, I got COVID. You know, the stock market's crashing. I'm seeing all red. Um, yo, and like, I'm, I'm that, and I'm quarantined in my house for the next two weeks. So like, what is there else to really do? And you know, I just be feeling down, bro. I, I really just do be feeling down some of these days. And yo, the way I get out, like the way I get out, I, I, 
I'm just not going to let shit hold me down, bro. I'm not going to let shit hold me back. I'm going to literally get up. I'm going to create new content, all right? I'm on TikTok. As y'all know, I'm on TikTok. Um, if you don't, follow me on TikTok. What are you doing, bro? Like, I, I try to do skits every single day. I try to post three three videos a day. Um, yeah, like, this is this is going to be my year, man. I'm, I'm going to j- just keep creating as much content as I possibly can, all right? We're, we got to keep moving forward. And um, all I'm doing is I'm, I have an iPhone. I'm just using my iPhone. I have one mic here, like, you know, like it's it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Um, it's something that I really do want to uh, succeed in. And I want to uh, help motivate y'all to do more. You know, I, I don't like people just like sitting around their house not doing shit, man. Like you have to be ambitious enough to go and pursue something that you love. All right. And this is just something that I love. It's something I, I like making for you guys. And I'm going to keep doing it. Um, all right. What else is on the news? Let's, let, let's, let's talk a little more. Let's get, let's get a little deep. All right. Let's get a little deep today. All right. Um, <clears throat> Bobby Shmurda is out of jail. All right. Bobby Shmurda. We all know who Bobby Shmurda is. All right. About a week ago, a week ago. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> But uh, nah, man, like, yeah, he's out of jail. So many people are looking forward to his release, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, listen, I don't know. I don't even, I don't really even know why he's in jail. But these are my thoughts on Bobby Shmurda, man. I'm not going to lie. Like, like, what did he really get in jail for? Like, you know, like, I think he exposed himself in that song. And he, he talked about killing, he, he like, uh, what do you go to jail for, like, murdering or something? The point is, everybody's glorifying him, glorifying him because he didn't snitch, all right? And I think that the only reason why he's getting as much attention as he is is because of Takashi 6 9 snitching, right? Like, let's be honest. Let's be completely honest. He's getting as much recognition because of Takashi 6 9 like, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, all right? I know he was going to get re- a recognition. Reg- That's what Bobby Schmurd is getting his recognition for, all right? Um, but besides that, you know, no hate on the guy. Love the guy, Bobby Schmurda. All right, now, I don't, I don't really know about him. <laughs> I don't know enough about him to say I love him. But, yo, know, listen, I just want to see how his music does in the future. And I, I, ho- I hope he does well. I hope he just exceeds expectations. And um, my only troubling thing besides the whole um, him being released is just how much pride people have. Like, they weren't over here, like, how much pride they have in Bobby Shmurda coming out, like, oh, yo, you know, snitches, bitches, blah, 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 like, all this shit. Like, they wasn't just singing whoop the last fucking week, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> like, why do you take so much pride in him being out of jail for not, for, like, for not snitching? Like, for what, bro? Like, if you were in his position, you'd snitch. Like, you couldn't even, quar- you can't even quarantine. You can't even be in your room for two weeks how are you gonna do jail for 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 the people you love bro you know what i'm saying like you know what i'm saying yeah uh, you know is it just me all right it's, it's probably just me it's probably just me <laughs> but anyways yeah guys yo it is what it is you know no hate towards the guy i don't know what other news there really is to talk about um i've been on netflix all right i have been on netflix i've, I've been binging netflix like crazy um i guess i'll recommend some some things for you guys to watch yo like behind her eyes if you have not seen that show go watch that show it, it, you know if, if you're with your shorty bro like you really gotta you really gotta watch the show probably with your shorty like let's let's just be honest you probably watch this shit with your shorty because behind her eyes is just it's behind her eyes is one of those shows that it that's great at telling stories, all right? Behind Her Eyes just has this way of telling a story. And it's obviously, I mean, it's not obvious, but it's about like a a cheating scandal, all right? It's pretty much what it is. Like a little little drama cheating scandal with a little mystery tones behind it. And that's all I can really say without spoiling it, I guess. You know, like the main character he kind of looks like he reminds me of like the Scottish Christian Grey, like really serious guy, and he's just like a complete asshole throughout the whole show. Um, and then like this girl Louise, she's just like this ditzy secretary, like just completely fucking dumb, bro. And then you have Adele. Adele is is, is the piece of resistance, bro. Like Adele 
is the is the person that really creates and controls and fabricates this entire show. All right, you have to watch the show for Adele, bro. All right, Adele is wifey type. <laughs> Adele is wifey type, bro. And when you watch the ending, you're gonna be in so much suspense and so much shock. Like, what did I just watch, bro? Because I'm one of those people that likes to sit here and predict the ending, and I couldn't predict this one. There was no way I was going to predict it, but it made complete sense. And when a show hits you like that, you're like, yo, that was amazing. Fuck it. That was amazing, bro. I don't care what how boring episode one and two was. That was fucking amazing, bro. It was worth the ride, all right? So, yo, if, you're, if you've got COVID and, you're, and you got to watch something, watch Behind Her Eyes. It's a good, it's a good watch. I'm gonna give it like a, like a eight out of ten. The ending was just amazing, 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 amazing. Go watch that show. Um, another show, The Sinner, with Matt Bomer. All right, if you know you know him as um the con artist from White Collar. All right, that that's where I know him from. But yo, that dude is is an incredible actor, amazing actor. Dude is clearly looks handsome. You know, no homo and all that shit. Uh. But yo, listen, the, the dude is is a great actor. And this is one of those shows that really has like those mystery thriller vibes to it. Um, and those, those serial killer vibes to it. All right. And then they're all they also have that great pace where they tell the, 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 the story very slowly, but it's worth it because it's really just kind of reeling you in with every little meticulous thing that's going on. You're like, yo, like who who did this? Like, did that person kill this person? Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. You know? So um, yeah. Watch that show. Watch that show, guys. Um, all right. Updates. Updates as for a uh, TikTok. Go follow me there. As I said before. Funny stuff, funny videos. You know, only like, you know, I I, I kind of hop on trends and post funny stuff there. So if you want to watch me there, watch me there. Um, I've got my vlogs as well. Uh, I'm going to link my TikTok down below, Jesus George. And uh, yeah, I think that's it, man. I think that that's all I can really talk about right now. So yeah, peace out, guys.